Welcome to milking a beef cow part two. First one we talked about your setup and how important it is and here's one reason why. So we want to be able to get in there and freshen that area up and keep it nice and clean. So I'm gonna lure Ruby out here with a little tree and, uh, and let the gate close behind us so that I can go in there and freshen the place up. I'm gonna just clean out the manure and add a little bit of fresh straw and then we'll pick up from there. The other reason we want her out there is because every morning when she first gets up, she does her morning business. And I like, I, I want to, to know that she has manured and urinated uh, before we start the milking process, because it's no fun when she's in here and we're milking and she, uh, yeah, she does her business. So I like to get her out of here, watch her do that outside of here and then bring her here and start milking. So next up is I'm going to give uh, the calf, the steer calf, some treats to keep him occupied for a little bit. And then I'll lure Ruby in here. And all these are our alfalfa cubes. Uh, we do all grass-fed beef here, so we're not going to give them any corn or anything like that. These are just alfalfa cubes. And this is to lure Ruby in. And then we'll put her in the head gate once she's in here and then give her the rest of uh, alfalfa pellets. Come on, Ruby. Here she comes. Come in here, we're gonna lock her in with our little homemade head gate. So she is locked in. Watch your head. You dump the holes in. Now, this is a very important part of the process. We want to clean the udder with as much warm soapy water as we can because we don't know where she's laid down and we also want to remove the calves germs and bacteria he was still nursing on his mama we want to we want to just make sure that this is good and clean this is nice hot soapy water even though it is a brisk 28 degrees out this morning the water's still good and warm then we want to dry this off really good as well because we don't want that water running down off of a teat and into our milk pail before you start milking into the pail you want your first few squirts on the ground um, and then into the pail we go now early on in the process she stays pretty calm and relaxed and still so we'll really be aggressive in our milking. She's also, her udder is full and uh, the milking is pretty easy early on. However, a little further into the process and she'll start moving around a little bit because she'll scatter pellets out on either side or more to the front or back of her little food tray and so she'll kind of move her body around to get better position to get that food 
it, like I said, it's 28 degrees this morning, but when you're out here in, in uh, the summer, July and August, flies are obviously a little more of an issue. And um, you just have to be aware, kind of pay attention at all times when you're milking because um, one of the places they'll get flies pretty bad and it's hard to treat or down by their feet by the hooves and so uh, even if you're in here milking the, the cows are are uh, you know pretty annoyed by those flies on their feet so oftentimes she'll just kind of raise her back foot up or, or front foot but her back feet are what we're concerned about when we're milking and just try to brush those flies off and uh, she's not being aggressive and trying to 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 kick us off she's just trying to get rid of the flies and so inherently though when she does that she'll actually knock the milk pail over so um, we just have to re react really quick and kind of anticipate her doing that. Um, otherwise, she'll knock over that milk pail. And again, she's not doing it on purpose. She's just trying to be comfortable. And uh, you just have to do your best to grab that milk pail and move it out of the way before she kicks it over accidentally. But it happens, you know, we it's happened to me a couple times where when you're milking, there's a couple things that you need to be looking for and kind of paying attention to. And that is oftentimes when, when she is eating up here, before she'll move a back foot, she'll actually move her torso for a lack of a better term so a front part of her body will move first and then her back legs and so you can kind of anticipate when she's about to move back leg and it'll tail and move it out of the way in advance so you just kind of pay attention to that another thing that you kind of want to be paying attention to is her tail and so while i'm milking i'm kind of in the my peripheral vision always watching her tail because um <clears throat> if she uh, needs to urinate and and believe me when you're milking uh when if she goes to urinate man you're uh it'll really catch you off guard if you're not paying close attention and she'll move this back leg really fast and aggressively out here like she'll move it up into the side and you can get stepped on and the milk pail can get kicked over simultaneously but what i was saying about the tail is is she'll raise her tail up really high into the air right before she urinates every time and so while i'm milking i'm kind of watching that tail back here Okay, I'm watching her tail out of the corner of my eye, and if I see that tail go up really fast, then I grab that milk pail and I try to move it um, as fast as I can because I know that there's a really good chance that she's about to, to pee, and I want to get out of the way, and I want to get the milk pail out of the way. Now again, this is a beef cow. She's a black Angus, and um, we, we absolutely thoroughly enjoy her milk i know for some folks they find that hard to believe but obviously her udder and her teats are very different than a dairy cow and as you can see here i'm i'm milking the the back teat back here and it's just super super small and i'm literally doing it with just really two fingers my thumb and my index finger and if you note, know, i'm not squeezing down the teat i am just kind of working almost pinching my fingers to to push that milk out now 
if I work on the front teeth, the front teeth's a little bigger, and I can get I can get my whole hand on that one teeth. And um, it's just kind of, a, you apply pressure, your index, then your middle, then your ring, then your pinky. And it obviously happens really fast, but that's the way to squeeze that milk out. Part three of this video series will be what happens to this milk once it leaves here and goes into the house. So we'll show you what, what we've been doing with the milk. But um, we're starting to get towards the end of the process here. And the milking definitely starts slowing down. Slowing down a little bit, it becomes a little more of a challenge. You can see over there, Amy's side is really flowing pretty good right now. But, um, so, again, you just got to kind of watch those feet and uh, pick the pail up. Um, when she does kick, I found that I like to pick the pail up and then try to move it. If I just try to jerk it out of the way real quick, especially at this uh, stage in the game where the milk pail is about half full, uh, if you just jerk that pail as fast as you can out of the way, you'll just slosh milk all over the place. Um, but if you pick it up, um, you, you don't slosh as much milk out. See down in there, some nice creamy milk. Um, this might be the more creamy, so that's why we keep fighting. Yeah. <laughs> Try to get as much out as we can. Yeah, that's, and that's just it. So in the milking process, I believe this is true for really any cow, whether it's a dairy or a beef, but um, early on, the in the first stage stages of milking that early milk uh you know in the first couple minutes of of milking is more of the skim milk and then in the latter stages these last portions are the creamy part of the milk and i when i found that out i thought that was really interesting i would think it would be the opposite uh, but it isn't so we like to stick around as long as possible she's pretty chill and pretty calm right now and uh, okay with us continuing to milk. So you can see her up there. She's contemplating the rest of her day or watching the sunrise. We have her pointed to her towards the east so she can enjoy that sunrise. Now here in a little bit, she'll probably just start rubbing her head on the, on the head gate and uh, scratching her neck and whatnot. And uh, that's usually, there she goes. That's usually kind of an indication that she's about ready to be done and get out it, like it's getting slow for us but she knows that uh, her calf is um, still wanting some uh, breakfast milk so she's gonna save some back for him she's not gonna give us all the milk and again she kind of knows where that that cutoff is and so she'll not really give us any more milk and she'll get a little antsy to get out of here and uh, you'll notice that once we are done, we'll let that baby calf out and he'll come running around here really fast and he'll start nursing himself and uh, she'll save him back a fair amount of milk. She is very calm this morning. This is very pleasant. Now we'll kind of show you the end process. All right, so then uh, she knows we're done. I'm gonna pull my fancy screwdriver out of there. Loosen the head gate. She's free to go now. And, oh, uh, baby. I'm gonna be patient for him. Thank you, patient, buddy. Now, go on over there and do your thing.